For one family in the Midwest, owning their own business was a dream come true. But now that business has become a constant source of terror. The family, who wishes to remain anonymous, believes that they're plagued by a malicious poltergeist who's out to destroy their dream and them. It's an unlikely setting for this real-life horror story. America's heartland, where the promise of the American dream can still be realized. Clean air and water, safe neighborhoods, a place where you can still buy a house and start your own business. All the reasons why the King family came here to raise their children and why they want to stay. But staying means confronting an evil force that seems to have possessed the family. One night I went to bed in the early a.m. and I woke up and my daughter, who was a, not quite a year old, still in diapers. She wasn't even walking. She could stand. I woke up the next morning and I felt pressure on my jaw real hard. And when I woke up and I looked up, my baby is standing straddled on my neck and she's got a butcher knife shoved down my throat. Her eyes were open and she just kind of looked at me and she started screaming like I'd woke her up, but her eyes were open. The bizarre, violent episodes began in 1987, just after the Kings purchased this home and motel. The safe haven they'd sought here turned into a waking nightmare. We could hear pounding in the walls, um, screaming, we heard chanting, we heard singing. Um, objects started flying across the room. I'd wake up with um, bruises, or it looked like somebody just beat, beat me really bad, and um, bite marks. I was looking at toward the hallway and it stepped, like stepped out of the wall and stood there, what seemed to me like an eternity. And I just couldn't believe it. I was like... When the Kings first came here and saw the home and the attached motel, it was love at first sight. But in retrospect, the Kings believed there were warning signs. The $60,000 asking price was reduced to $24,000 when the family made a serious offer. There were whisperings about a gruesome murder-suicide in the house. The former caretakers confirmed these suspicions. There was a lady that lived here at one time that was supposed to have committed suicide. And the way I understand it, she was supposed to have been really mean to her father-in-law, who was an old man. I never got any rest. Somebody was on my bed jumping continuously. My bed would move. They told me the house was haunted to start out with, but I just didn't stay around because, you know, hey, something bothered you, get away from it. After the Kings moved in, encounters with the unknown force intensified. A mysterious stain appeared above the fireplace. The spot was sandblasted, but the stain came back. Fresh paint and new wallpaper immediately peeled off the walls, and spontaneous fires kept erupting near the attic. We thought somehow somebody was getting into the house, had keys or something, and for whatever reason was setting fires, trying to, to burn us out or something. And we talked, we set the children down and talked to them. We said, lock everything up. If you see any strange people or cars, come tell us. Well, I took my daughter to the bathroom and she looked up at me, these, these you know, real serious eyes and said, Mommy, she said, Daddy didn't start the first fire. And she said, the ghosts are setting the house on fire. And she meant it. You, mean, you, you look at her eyes and just say, she meant what she was saying. The haunting has taken its toll on six-year-old Ashley. It's hard for her to talk about her experiences, even with her own father. Maybe I can get you to uh, talk a little bit about what went on in the house or something. Well, let me ask you. Huh? Well, I'd be afraid about. In desperation, the Kings consulted a parapsychologist specializing in poltergeists. They were having poltergeist-like activity in the house, which to me meant that things of a shadowy nature were taking place. I also felt that the children were in danger or could be in danger. I recommended strongly that they not be brought back into the house until the place was cleared. But with their life savings in the house, the Kings were trapped. After Dr. Moscow's visit, Doretta began to have terrifying visions of a grisly murder. Was she seeing the ghostly images of a deadly crime? First time that this happened, I had put my daughter, who at the time was like a year and a half old, she was a baby. I put her in the tub, and she was standing here, and I was sitting on the side of the tub, and I felt that jolt. It felt just like somebody was, was running a movie projector on a wall. It was vivid color. I started seeing, what you call the images or whatever, of a man, and a man was sitting on the side of the tub, 
fight with the woman and he killed her and I mean that's like I felt her she released and it was over and then you know the little girl he hit her the first time with the shovel and um Because I felt the emotion. Um, she knew he was hurting her. And he, she screamed, Mommy. And Mommy was already sliding down. And he hit the little girl. And the first time she hit the wall, so he hit her again. And then her little head, his blood just sort of, you know, got splattered on all through her little hair. And then he drug him over there. It got to the point and bad enough where me and Steven would even stay awake at night and just make sure we didn't feel anything or see anything happening to Doretta because she seemed to be at one point getting the the most attention, I guess if you want to put it that way. Uh, she was being almost like violated. And then it moved away from me onto the children and they were actually being bitten. Ashley got the worst of that. She would scream and, and say, make them stop. And um, at one time, I, I jumped on top of her, and I was really mad, and I told him to bite me. And I could feel her skin underneath me. I could, I could feel it like it was depressing, and I, I raised my arm up, and there was bites all over. And they were, like, biting through me, and they weren't biting me, but they, they were biting her. And that was horrible, because I couldn't, I couldn't stop them from hurting them. Desperate to rid their lives of this terror, they turned to world-renowned parapsychologist Dr. William Roll for answers. Uh, this particular home is located in a, in a triangle of high tension wires uh, uh, leaving open the possibility that uh, the occurrences may be related to, to, that, to that situation. A home like this is a kind of hatchery for ghosts you might say because of the uh, electromagnetic fields. We accompanied Dr. Roll during his investigation. Three prominent psychics were brought in to try and identify the source of the disturbing poltergeist activity. I feel there was a murder here. Possible that there could be a body under this house, or bodies, too. Uh, I don't feel it's necessary to dig them up. I feel that these people can be released simply through understanding. The investigation proceeded. Finally, at 4.17 a.m., a breakthrough the presence of an entity was strongly felt. Although our cameras couldn't pick up an image, Doretta felt she had made contact. He's here, I'm trying to convince him to show itself. Any idea where he might do that? He's standing right here. Yeah, I work with him. I mean, this is the first time he's ever even attempted to be nice. It's building. It's right there. Where? In the, in Can the you touch where it is? Wood. Even one of our skeptical crew members felt the presence. I feel it, and I see right there. Yes, right here. Just give him some here. My hair is standing on end. It's oh, so strange. It's dissipated after all the activity of the evening. Okay. Calm down. There it was. Families who live in a home like this may experience, because of the place they are at in their lives, may experience events that have happened in the past in this house, in a house like this. Uh, we seem to have, there seems to be something that we call place memories. It's not only brains and minds that hold memories, but places also hold memories. We raised the children that um, monsters weren't real, and there wasn't ghosts and boogeymen. <laughs> and we raised them to be really secure in that. And when this happened, and when, when it all came about, suddenly the whole belief, our belief system and what we taught our children was turned upside down and shook. And they looked at us, and it was that look of, you know, we trusted you. Despite the work of the parapsychologists, the Kings were finally forced out by the entity. They wanted a safer home for their children, but finances have made it impossible for them to abandon the home they own. They've had to move back, and no one can predict what awaits them now.